living the Tao, the Tao Te Ching, this this uh, twenty six hundred year old, uh, some people call it the greatest, uh, the wisest book ever written. Um, it it speaks so much about uh, about relationships. Um, uh, Tao, the word Tao um, means the Great Way. It's, it's really just it's just another synonym for God, or Source, or Spirit, or you know that which is the All Creating. And one of the things that it says that was really helpful to me, probably the most helpful thing in, in it, was that whenever you have a conflict of any kind in any relationship, whenever you have a conflict, that the person who is willing to be of Tao, of God, of Source. Uh, is the one who will um, practice forgiveness or will go go to the person that they have a conflict with and and bring love to it instead of the freeze out instead of the anger instead of the hatred instead of the revenge instead of so many of the things that we do when we have conflicts in our lives uh, we just don't talk to that person like I'm not talking to that I'm not talking to him he's you know or he, you know he's gonna call me because I called the last time and that's gonna, uh, but the person who lives the Tao life, the, uh, the, uh, the life of, of, of a higher consciousness, is the person who says, um, I end all conflicts on love, on love, which is what, where we all come from. We come from, we come from a, a source that is love. So for me, that has been just so useful. I have eight children, and, um, and uh, uh, that's been just extraordinarily helpful for me to be in a relationship where I can always be uh, of love, where I can just, you know, eat. and so then you don't even, ha conflicts become something that are, are, are no longer present because conflict requires two-ness. In order to have a conflict, you know, you have to have two, you have to, two different opinions or whatever. But if you live in oneness, if you really see yourself in, in everyone else, see yourself in, uh, in all the things, including the plants, including the animals, and including all beings, and so on. If you just, if you just suspend this ego part of you and just see yourself in that other person, then your arguments are really with yourself, and your your hatreds are really about yourself. And you begin to really see that um, I don't have to project anything onto anyone else that isn't what I choose to be. And it's again, it's the it's having the curiosity, it's having the willingness to uh, to say. This isn't working for me. You know, it's like you get bit by a snake and you're bit. Okay. So, but the bite doesn't kill you. You're still there. You know, the, you don't bite, die from a snake bite. You don't die from what somebody, you don't get hurt from what somebody else does to you. It's the venom that continues to pour through your system after the bite. That's what causes difficulties in relationships and so on. And when you recognize that, that to be angry, to be full of revenge, I mean, I could bring anybody in this crew in here and do a muscle test with them and ask them a question to hold your arm out, like to, to hold your arm out like this mm -hmm. and, uh, and think about somebody who's abandoned you or abused you, who did something that you didn't like, who borrowed money from you and didn't pay it back, who walked out on you, someone that you hate. And just for a moment, just for a moment, hold your arm out as tight as you, as hard as you can. I'm going to put two fingers right here and I'm going to push down and you think about getting revenge. You just think about just, for, even if you don't want to do that, just think the thought of, I'm going to get even with that bastard for what he did or what she did. I'm going to really get even with him. And you push, and that you find out that they have no strength when you think a thought of revenge. There's no strength in there. Kinesiology, a very simple test. Then what we just demonstrated here is the power of the thoughts that we have. What a thought of shame, a thought of anger, a thought of revenge. What it does to the muscles of our body. The muscles of our, it's, it's like the reason I ask you to tell me a lie, you know, yeah, yeah. is because I wanted to test your body. Because your body, your body wasn't made by your parents. You like we like to think that our bodies were made by our parents. That's because you look a certain way and all of that. But if we take the tiny little drop of protoplasm that uh, created your created you, and we try to find out its origin, and we take it all the way back to sub sub subatomic particles and reduce it, reduce it, reduce, we find out when we put it in a particle accelerator and re and re rev it up at two hundred and fifty thousand miles an hour and collide it, and we open it up, there's nothing there. That you came from the invisible, you came from source. It's the spirit that gives life. So that once you understand that this body of yours is a creation not of human beings, but it's a creation of God. It's a creation of source. It's a creation. It came from nowhere. 
and an invisible source and manifest it into the world of the physical. And so it can it only reacts to um it only reacts to truth because it's it's it was created by truth. So once you lie, this is an ultimate lie detector test. That's why I said we could have saved ninety-three million dollars with President Clinton. You know, it's like, come on, come on. Did you have sex or didn't you? Let's get over this. You know, uh, but 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 now you're using an instrument of not of human beings. You, all of our bodies are are divine creations, and they only re they only react to truth with strength. The truth that you the, when you go weak. You're you're going against your Tao nature. Your true nature is not revenge. Your true nature is not hatred. You came from love, mm -hmm. and you have to stay in that state. And once you once you learn that, once you get that, once you like having that demonstrated, could change your life. Just that moment can change forever.